Hello guys, in this video of this robotic series, we will talk about ROS2 and how it is different from ROS1. We will also talk about why ROS2 is important and how different startups and companies are moving towards ROS2 and porting either their existing code to ROS2 or making new functionalities in ROS2 and integrating them with their current setup in ROS1. This video assumes that you have a basic understanding of ROS1 and we built on top of that to understand how ROS2 differs from ROS1. Now, since you already know about ROS1, I will jump straight into the main points. Let's talk about 7 main differences between ROS1 and ROS2. 1. Third party middleware. ROS1 has its own middleware where it uses a network stack to communicate between different nodes. In ROS2, that is not the case. ROS2 uses a third party middleware called DDS. Now, ROS2 guys decided to use a third party middleware like DDS because it is already stable and proven in the market for the last couple of years. So it was a good move to use that instead of maintaining their own middleware which might be prone to errors. As I said, DDS is already proven in the industry. So they started using that middleware and integrated everything in the system with that middleware. Second, no ROS master anymore. In ROS1, we have a ROS master which facilitates communication between different nodes. Two nodes are able to find each other using ROS master's help and then they are connected directly. But if at any point in time a ROS master dies, the problem is that these nodes will still be communicating with each other, but no new node can join this network. So the system is heavily dependent on ROS master. In ROS2, that is not the case because nodes in ROS2 can find each other without any ROS master or a conductor of sorts, and then they can communicate with each other directly. So at any point in time, a new node can join the network. Also in robotics, we usually have distributed systems even within a computer, but sometimes we have multiple devices or multiple computers. So that becomes a distributed system of a distributed system. In that case, we can only have one ROS master in ROS1. So one device will have a ROS master and the other device will not. So in that case, the same ROS master is used to communicate between one device and the other. So that also becomes a problem down the line as the system increases in complexity. Third, shared implementation for C++ and Python. ROS1 and ROS2 both support Python and C++. But in ROS1, they did not have a shared backend code base. For instance, in ROS1, each subscriber in Python has its own thread. But when you create a subscriber in C++, they do not have their own threads. So there's a difference between the backend code working between Python and C++. In ROS2, they have completely changed this. Both C++ and Python have a shared code base. So the functionalities do not differ if you're coding the same thing in Python and C++. This common code base is exposed to us on the application layer through ROS client library APIs, both in C++ and Python. Fourth, multiple ROS nodes in one process. In ROS1, you could not create multiple nodes in one process, but in ROS2, that can be done now. Fifth, action services. In ROS1, action services were not a part of the core library, but something called actionlib, which was another library. In ROS2, they have also integrated action services, and then we only have ROS client library, which includes all of this. Sixth, Windows support. Well, Windows was not supported for ROS1 and it is supported for ROS2. I've never worked with Windows when it comes to ROS, but I think there are use cases of using Windows when it comes to ROS. Seventh and the last big one is changes in launch infrastructure. In ROS1, we used XML based launch files, but in ROS2, we have Python based launch files as well. That means we have a lot more control on what is being launched. We use a Python script to launch everything, so it's already Pythonic, so we can control whatever we want to do like we are coding normally. So having this extra control is a big benefit for us. So these were the main differences between ROS1 and ROS2. Now let's talk about the importance of ROS2 and why we should move to ROS2. Almost all open source robotics projects which are currently being maintained and developed further have moved to ROS2 active development. That means ROS1 active development is not available right now. So if you're using any open source packages for ROS, it means that in the future, they will be really good for ROS2, but they won't be developed for ROS1. So that's why if you're using any open source ROS packages like navigation, localization, move it, they will be developed for a long, long time in ROS2, but their active development in ROS1 will not happen anymore. So to have new features, to continuously leverage these open source uh, ROS packages, it is a great idea to move to ROS2. In the present, if you're using ROS1, it is okay, but it is a long-term strategy to start thinking about ROS2 and start porting your existing projects to ROS2. Or from what I understand, most companies are not really betting on moving everything to ROS2 because that requires a lot of time and money resource, right? So what they're doing is the new features are developed in ROS2 
and they are basically integrating that with whatever they have in ROS1. We have something called a ROS bridge which can establish communication between a ROS1 software system and a ROS2 software system. So most people are betting on that but as the system evolves, as ROS2 evolves and the community moves towards ROS2, we will see how that goes. But I'm convinced that if a new project is started right now and it probably will use a lot of open source ROS packages, we definitely, definitely need to start working in ROS2 instead of starting in ROS1. So that's what I think about ROS2 and this video hopefully helps you in understanding how ROS2 is different from ROS1 and why we should start thinking about ROS2. I also write blog posts on my robotics journey, both technical and non-technical. That would be on Medium and I'll share the link in the description below. If anyone's curious, I'd love for them to check it out. Thank you so much. I hope this video helped and I'd love to know what you think. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.